So it says, common static electricity involves charges ranging from nanocoulombs to microcoulombs. Uh, one coulomb of charge is actually a pretty large amount of charge. Um, so it says, because uh, we are going to talk about electrons. So it's good to have uh, electron charge. So, so let me just define elementary charge as that, 1.602 times 10 to the power of minus 19. And it asks, uh, how many electrons are needed to form a charge of, okay, negative, good, electrons are negatively charged, for nanocoulomb. Oh, so I, it's a, you could look at it as a kind of a unit conversion, you know, it's uh, with uh, this electron charge, what we are saying is 1.602 times 10 to the minus nine, 19. Coulomb per electron, and they've given us a quantity in the well in the unit of nanocoulomb. We have four uh, times ten to the minus nine nanocoulomb. So what we are asking, they are asking us to do unit conversion into electron. So we can multiply by this in the right combination to cancel out the coulomb and get electron on the numerator. So that would be one electron on the numerator divided by 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. It's a kind of a unit conversion, so hopefully this makes sense. If it does, I'm just going to plug in the numbers. Uh, 4 times 10 to the power of minus 9 divided by elementary charge. So, um, two point, oh wow, that's large. So 2.5 times 10 to the power, and I think, yeah, um, that's the format hint. So 2.5 five zero e ten that's uh, what this is and by the way you can also do lowercase it uh, understands both um, I think it will understand both let me give it a try capital is the correct one uh, how many electrons must be removed from a neutral object to leave a net charge okay so one point for micro column oh by the way because this has come up you should have um, uh, SI prefixes memorized and I think your textbook has a appendix that has uh, SI prefixes. Let me see here. Um, and so my recommendation really is to have them memorized. They are the kind of things that all engineers ought to know. So I think it's going to be under... So it's not in your textbook, but where you will find it is the textbook you had for Physics 4A. It's not repeated in Physics 4B textbook because we physicists don't repeat things. We assume that if you've seen something once, you'll remember it forever. I mean, I'm half joking, but uh, we do. Um, so under units and standards, I think it'll be here. Uh, so in chapter one of what you covered in Physics uh, 4A, um, you had a table of SI prefixes, metric prefixes. So this is uh, something that should have been your general um, engineering knowledge. And um, I don't have uh, all of them memorized, but I have most of it. So I, in the, on the small side, I have it memorized through ADO. And I guess uh, once it's going to JEPTO and YOKTO, I, I don't know those. But I have them memorized down to ADO. And on the large side, I have them memorized to maybe PETA, EXA. And what I will say is that uh, um, at least the lower, like five rows of these, you should have them memorized. So when someone's giving you something in micro something, you should immediately know that's 10 to the power of minus 6. It's the kind of thing that you need to practice of. So, um, so with the for instance, uh, 1.4 micro coulomb, I automatically know it's 1.4 times the 10 to the power of minus 6, because uh, I have them memorized. And i also recommending that you have it memorized, uh, 8.74 e equal. So, all right, yeah, that's it. Just no more prolonging exercise. And the capital is the correct one, but the system will recognize the lowercase e as well. It's kind of forgiving with the inputs that way. Uh, OK, so says 30 gram ball of copper has that much net charge. What fraction of coppers? Electrons have been removed. Okay. Um, oh, I need to know the atomic mass of copper. Does it give any more? Ah, uh, 1 AMU is that. Okay. So let me just put in 1 AMU is 1.661 times 24 
gram. Yeah, uh, my masses are in grams, so I think we'll be fine. So let's uh, convert the um, unit of this into. Uh, so I have 30 gram of copper. I would like to express it in terms of the atoms of copper. So, <laughs> so uh, let me just write a couple things down as a reminder. So what I have is that, um, so copper has atomic mass of that meaning, uh, one atom of copper is equal to uh, 63.5 AMU. So when I want to convert 30 grams into number of atoms of copper, I will multiply with this in a way that uh, works out. So 30 grams mass um, divided by the mass of a single copper atom. So that's going to be 63.5 times AMU. And uh, this 63.5 times AMU, that will give me mass of the copper in grams. So, so that will give me the number of copper atoms in that 30 gram, which is uh, 2.8 times 10 to the 23. And um, from this detail that's been given, I know uh, each copper atom has 29 electrons. So let me just take that, multiply it with the 29, and that's going to be my number for um, just... Well, well this, I, so this is the total number of electrons in the thing that I'm working with. So total, and let's see. Oh. Okay. Now, they said the net charge of two microcoulomb. So I need to convert that to number of electrons, the same way we had before. So two microcoulomb divided by elementary charge for number of electrons. So... I've removed that many electrons. So um, that divided by total number of uh, electrons in this 30 gram of copper is that tiny of a fraction. Um, so yeah, fraction removed, let me just type that in 1.51 or E minus 12. Some of this is just the uh, practice in working with scientific notation, but it's tiny. Uh, and two microcoulomb is uh, kind of a typical amount of static charge you would deal with on um, like regular circumstances. Um, let's keep going. Uh, question, I think this is one dash. Uh, let me just double check. This is the one dash three, yeah. Uh, need to do that. So this one says, to start a car engine, the car battery removes this many electrons <laughs> through the starter motor. Okay, that looks like a lot. Uh, let's uh, so I have to do the unit conversion this time from electrons to coulomb. So going back here, you know. Um, so oh, I can take this and multiply with that. That'll give me coulombs. So I think that's the thing to the three point one three times ten to the power of twenty one times elementary charge. So oh wow, five one point four coulomb. That sounds like a lot. But I think that's actually correct. Um, it's a large amount of current. You're, it, it, this is like the defining feature of a car battery, which is it's uh, one of the few things that can provide a huge amount of current in a really short amount of time. Um, that's why you can. Even though car battery works at like 12 volts, 20 volts, you can just replace them with your AA batteries in series. Like, that doesn't work. Um, Okay, so uh, looking at, I need to do question 2-2, two two, this one. So the question says, uh, in a salt crystal, the distance between adjacent sodium and chloride ions. Okay, uh, let me just start doodling. It looks like it's describing some two interaction between two charges, and they've given us the distance. Uh, it is what is the force of attraction between two singly charged ions? So I'm trying to remember. So sodium, that's an out. So it tends to lose electrons. So I guess this positive charge must be the sodium ion, and this must be the chloride ion. Um, they are singly charged, meaning we actually know how much charge these have. This charge is plus e. This charge two is minus E. 
um, so for electric force, we can just use Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law, which says that the electrostatic force between two point charges is Coulomb constant times the product of charges divided by their distance squared. I think I, we have all the numbers, and they're asking for, I think they are looking for magnitude, so I'll just calculate the magnitude. Um, I do need to know Coulomb constant, and I don't know if I have them. I don't have it memorized, <laughs> so let me look at Or I don't have it memorized well enough to just guess at it. So let me just program it in into the calculation so that I can just use it. Coulomb constant there is 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 in the basic SI unit. I'll just do everything in basic SI units. So, okay, I think I have everything. I already programmed in elementary charge from before, so I can say, the electrostatic force here is Coulomb constant times the um, well the elementary charge of one of them times also elementary charge of the other one. They are different in sign, but magnitude is the same. Divide by the distance of the 2.02 times 10 to the power of minus 10. And I'm just gonna make sure that I did everything in basic SI units. And uh, one of the things that you will see is. That feels like I might have done something wrong. Oh, oh I forgot to square it. <laughs> Distance squared. Because <laughs> okay. uh, whenever I do this, uh, part of that is actually trying to help you so that you don't have to use scientific notation. So, all right, that, that looks right. <laughs> so I can do 5.65 here. It won't always be that way, but uh, like this could have been 10 to the power of minus 9. So that will be 0 0.565. Um, so... So yeah, what I was going to say uh, was um, as we go deeper into electricity and magnetism, the units can sometimes get super complicated. Um, so the number one advice I would give you is keep all your quantities in SI units and you'll be fine. Because that's a, really the whole purpose of SI unit system. So that um, SI unit system meaning the basic units of seconds, meters, kilogram, and now Coulomb. So as long as you express everything in those basic SI units, uh, like if you ignore the units and assume that it'll work out okay in other basic SI units, you'll be fine. Um, and yeah, I'll highlight this later in the semester when it comes up. <laughs> you need to get just complicated <laughs> in electricity and magnetism as you go deeper.